Welcome to this week's End of Days Update, coming to you from Eugene, Oregon. We've had such a great time here at Harvest Church International. If you're anywhere near, try to come back this Wednesday night. We'll have a great time. And this weekend, if you can, we'll be in Marietta, California. We'll be at West Coast Life Church. We'll have an awesome time. Just Sunday morning only, though. We're coming to you every week to look at the different things that point to the coming of the Lord, specifically the gathering of nations for the Ezekiel 38 war, because that happens just after the rapture. Because the rapture of the church is signless, but the second coming has tons of signs. So we want to look at what happens just after the, the rapture of the church. So gosh, every single week something keeps happening uh, to show us. Why would we get into this? You know, as you see the finish line, you run faster, not slower. So all these things show us how close we are. So as we see the finish line, we accelerate. Remember Jesus, He rebuked the crowd. He, he hardly ever rebuked the crowd. He rebuked the Pharisees many, many times. But the only time He rebuked the crowd was over not knowing their hour of their visitation. So He wanted them to know. So uh, we get into this to show us how close we are. We're so privileged. There's more verses written about what it would look like just before the coming of the Lord than anything in the Bible. Remember, for every one verse there is about the first coming of the Lord, there's eight times more about the second coming. So, so much is happening around Israel. We'll try to go piece by piece. First, I want to talk about the asteroid that came by a few days ago. The closest one since they've been keeping record. I believe it's called 2020 VT4, and it was 240 miles away from the earth. Man, you've got stuff happening in the heavens. Uh, the last few weeks, there's been so many uh-oh asteroids go by that happened. They saw them after the fact. Uh, so that's pretty radical. Something that just happened yesterday, Israel uh, had a, a, uh, an airstrike just outside of Damascus, some more convoys coming from Iran down into Syria to bring weaponry to Lebanon and it was taken out by Israel. Also, some explosive devices were on the border of Israel and the Golan, and Israel diffused those. So you, you got a continual operation of, of an attack against Israel all the time. Same thing, you had some rockets from southern Gaza flying to the central part of Israel, not just the southern part of Israel. So uh, it is amazing that Israel's continually uh, having to protect themselves. We don't talk about it that much, but when those rockets come out of Gaza, Israel has to go to bomb shelters, and with COVID, it makes COVID spread, so they're purposely doing it like that just to be ornery. So a lot of stuff's happening, though. You got this last week. This really kind of shocked me. Israel came out twice. It was in the Jerusalem Post and Debka that it looked like Israel was going to preemptively strike Iran's nuclear plants because nothing is shutting down at the speed at which they're enriching uranium. So it's really going uh, beyond being checked by anybody. So we've talked about that every week, but man, it came out last week, kind of freaked me out. And then it came out that the U.S. was going to preemptively strike Iran, one of those places, but it looked like the leadership decided not to do that because, man, it's basically would open up Pandora's box. But we look like we're taking some troops out of Iraq. Looks like we're taking some troops out of Afghanistan. In the middle of that, you had rockets fire, fire into Baghdad, into the green zone. Uh, it's just amazing how Iranian troops keep doing that. I do like that uh, Secretary of State Pompeo is going to Europe this week and me meeting with Europeans to look, kind of fortify the U.S. and the Europeans, uh, really, to come out with a plan for Turkey. It got Turkey just furious. Uh, What's his name? Erdogan just went ballistic because of what was said. But Turkey keeps doing things that are provocative. They did again this last week uh, off the coast of Greece. They're trying to intimidate even even Greece. So it's just kind of crazy to see uh, basically what what Turkey keeps trying to do. So one thing after another, you're watching the, it play out. I I like that the Palestinians got so mad because Pompeo is going into the the West Bank and really into Judea and Samaria. So these are areas that are going to really bring about a, a, a radical change and, and change just before the tribulation period. There were some cool things about the Temple Mount. You had Saudi Arabian newspapers come out with the al Aas Mosque is not tied to Islam. It's not, it's not where it should be. It's basically the main one is in Mecca, which we know that, but it really kind of condemned them. And then you had uh, Saudi Arabia coming out against... Uh, uh, Hezbollah saying it's a terrorist organization and the Muslim Brotherhood is a terrorist organization. So it's so interesting to see Arabs taking up for Israel. You had Morocco looking like they're going to do formal ties with Israel. It looks like a couple other nations are going to move their embassies uh, into Jerusalem. So a lot keeps happening that point to the coming of the Lord. So how exciting is this to watch it play out right in front of our eyes? Nation after nation after nation is literally doing those things that are set up for the Antichrist to come on the scene and do what he's going to do. So we know Islam's going to get even crazier in some areas, but I, wa I love watching Israel prepare for what is to come. So we in the church do the same thing as well. So, so what do we do? We always go back to the Scripture every week. I know we've, we've heard it a lot, but number one, Israel made a nation. 
Number two, Jerusalem won back. Jesus said the generation that sees those two events will not pass away till all is fulfilled. So how blessed are we that we have the main signs right in front of our eyes. That after that, you've got the Hebrew language restored. You've got the Ethiopian Jews brought back. You've got the fertility of the land of Israel. You have the revival of the Roman Empire. All of these things, you have the Temple Mount Institute. You had water showing up in the ritual baths around the temple. You had fish showing up in the Dead Sea. Just amazing uh, to have all these tangible things that we can look at. You have 172 different species of predatory birds that start showing up on the land. So it's amazing to have... Uh, uh, the tangibility of all these signs show us Jesus is just about to come back. But you have many more. Men will be lovers themselves. And we have tons of more signs. You have about 50 actual signs. We'll get into about 10 or 12 right before each EDU. But you know what? After that, you got signals. You had blood red moons on Passover and Tabernacles, which is just absolutely amazing. Four in a row. Isn't it amazing that God would indicate through the heavens, I died for you, I'm coming back. I died for you, coming back. NASA calls it a tetrad. When's the last time you have four in a row like that on Passover and Tabernacles? 1967, when, when Jerusalem was won back. 1948, when Israel was made a nation. 1492, with the Edict of Expulsion. So that's, that's radical in itself. But after that, you had the Bethlehem Star this last year. Jupiter, Regulus, and Venus coming together. I mean, that's so cool that you'd have a, a re reoccurring of what happened at the birth of the king because it's time for the entrance of the king. So many more. You had Mercury do a flyby of the sun uh, just before. Uh, amazing, it went down right over the, the Temple Mount at sunset. Planets formed a sickle. The moon formed a sickle. Orion changed its instrument to hammer. He had hammer and sickle on the same day. That's, that's Russia's symbol. So you have a ton of stuff happening that I didn't get into about China. You got exercises in China. You got troops with Japan and Australia uh, coming together because, man, this is it. You got nations getting in position, moving in place because Jesus is just about to come. So what do we do? Help our local church, help our local pastor, be engaged. As you see the finish line, you, we, we hustle. We, you know, when you're engaged to get married, you talk more, not less. So this is it. I've heard people say, well, is it, is it really it? This is really it. Jesus is just about to come. Man, thanks for coming this week. If you can, join us out in California. We'll have a great time. We'll see you next Wednesday. God bless you. Thanks for joining us today at the end of day's update. If you'd like to be notified every time there's a new post, just go to the edu at josephmorris.com and subscribe to receive email alerts. If these posts and updates have been a blessing to you, please consider making a one-time donation to help get the message out or even becoming a monthly partner with Joseph Morris Ministries. Thanks again for tuning in to the EDU and we'll see you next week.